Voodoo 3 cards get extremely hot. Especially the PCI edition, which is equipped with an extra voltage regulator that may heat up to 100 degrees Celsius. In my previous video, we managed to decrease the temperature of this voltage regulator by 20 degrees by just applying thermal paste. Thank you all for your suggestions and ideas in the comments. There will be for sure some follow ups on this regulator because even at 70 degrees, it is still extremely hot. Today, however, we will focus on the main graphic chip of Voodoo 3 cards. That includes PCI and AGP cards. My model here is a Voodoo 3 2000 PCI, which is a bit unlucky. Not only is the heatsink glued to the chip with strong epoxy, it also looks like this job was done on the way out 5 minutes before the shift ended. In the previous video I mentioned that I would like to replace the heatsink with a larger one. And some of you pointed out that the larger heatsink may not make a big difference. It will just heat up slower, but will probably end up at a similar temperature. That sounds plausible, but the main reason I want to get rid of this heatsink is because of the epoxy and the mediocre placement of the current heatsink. With proper thermal paste and a well fitted heatsink plus fan, I think we can get this card to very low temperatures. But we will not focus on the heatsink today, more what's underneath it, the 3DFX chip. The motivation for this video comes from a tutorial I stumbled upon on YouTube. A person called Edward uploaded a short video about 6 years ago. So yeah, this is pretty much old news. However, I will add a few more details that weren't mentioned in Edward's video. We are not overclocking the card today and we are not cooling the card to sub-zero, which may have been miscommunicated by this video's thumbnail. We will find the minimum voltage required by the 3DFX chip of this Voodoo 3 2000 before we see artifacts on the screen or the card crashes. But how are we going to do this? Well, there is a second regulator on this board close to the PCI connector. This regulator takes the 3.3 volts we get from the other regulator with a heatsink and steps it further down to 2.6 volts, which is the default voltage supplied to the 3DFX chip. Here is a table with reference voltages that are supplied to the 3DFX chip from the Voodoo 3 1000 all the way up to the highest clocked model, the Voodoo 3 3500. The Voodoo 3 2000 should be supplied with a voltage between 2.5 and 2.63 volts. And we are right within this range at 2.6 volts. Unfortunately, this voltage brings the chip and its heatsink to about 70 degrees under load. Yes, it may be ok to run the chip at those temperatures. But if we can reduce the heat and save energy in the process without losing performance, then why not? The regulator that supplies power to the 3DFX chip is an EC1580 dual input low dropout regulator. Please be aware that I am not an expert when it comes to electronics. Nevertheless, here's the datasheet that shows a table with different models of this regulator. In the notes, we can read that if no voltage is indicated on the regulator itself, then it is the adjustable version. Such a regulator can be used to step down the input voltage all the way to 1.3 volts. Currently, it regulates the input voltage of 3.3 volts down to 2.6 volts. Here is the pin configuration of the EC1580. Pin 5 is the power input, the 3.3 volts. Pin 3 is the output pin, which supplies the 3DFX chip with power, currently at 2.6 volts. Pin 4 and 1 are control and sense, which we can ignore today. And pin 2 allows to adjust the regulator's output voltage. This pin is currently connected to ground through a 128 ohm resistance. We can adjust the resistance by connecting a second resistor in parallel. This would reduce the overall resistance between the pin and ground and should allow us to reduce the voltage at the output pin. It would be quite difficult to find the minimum voltage at what the 3DFX chip still operates normally if I would use resistors with fixed values. Good that there are variable resistors. This is a 1 kilo ohm variable resistor. At least this is what it says on the packaging. I will add two wires to two of the pins. Those two wires will have to be connected to the card. The black wire will connect to ground and the red wire will connect to pin 2 of the voltage regulator, the pin that allows adjusting the output voltage. I tested the resistance before doing the soldering work to make sure the resistor works. But here's the reading once more after I have attached the wires. It looks like the resistor has a maximum resistance of 1.2 kilo ohms. And it goes down to less than 3 ohms. That is good enough. 
We just have to make sure that the resistance is at its highest value when we start the PC so the Voodoo 3 gets as close to the default voltage as possible. If the resistance is too low, we could end up with an underpowered chip that refuses to work and thus prevents the board to boot. Let's attach the red wire to the regulator. Again, we have to connect our new parallel resistor to the pin that allows adjusting the voltage output. Accessing pin 2 is a bit tricky because of the tiny pins and the area we have to work in. The black wire goes to ground. I just soldered it to a spot on the VGA connector as this was the easiest spot I could find. Once we create a final and permanent solution, there may be better spots to connect the resistor to ground. While we are already here, let's attach a second wire to pin number 3, the regulator output. The yellow wire is purely to measure the output voltage, which is powering the 3DFX chip. With all three wires in place, we can perform some tests before we start the system. Remember the resistance value we had without this mod? It was 128 ohms. With the resistor at maximum resistance, the measurement is now around 116 ohms. The resistance dropped and therefore we should already see a difference in voltage when we power on the card. I can turn the knob of the variable resistor and influence the resistance, all the way down to around 2 ohms. But as I said before, we need to keep the resistance at the highest value, so that the regulator outputs a voltage that is as close as possible to the default voltage. Let's try the card now, with a variable resistor set to its highest resistance. The yellow wire is connected to the multimeter, so we can have a live voltage reading. And here we go. The card powers on and the voltage, which was at 2.6 volts before the mod, is now sitting at 2.47 volts. That is already a reduction, but we have expected that. Let me start on Tournament and see if we can reduce the voltage further. I just let the intro scene loop and start reducing the resistance. Just a little turn on the dial reduces the voltage. What I am looking for are artifacts on the screen. A crash would also be possible, but I have seen videos where it usually starts with artifacts. This may also be an interesting point to check if the resistance is correct when dealing with artifacting cards. It may just be the voltage regulator not sending enough voltage to the chip. And now we have reached 2.3 volts, from initially 2.6 volts. The card seems to be working without issues. I could even play a round of Unreal Tournament, capture the flag, and everything seems to be fine. I guess we can lower the voltage even further. I restarted Unreal Tournament, this time with a frame counter and a higher resolution to make sure we are maxing out the card. By the way, every card is different. Your card may be able to go lower than my card in terms of voltage or it may not be able to go further than 2.3 volts. It all depends on the quality of the 3DFX chip. And we are approaching 2 volts. This is 0.6 volts lower than the default voltage. That means we lowered the voltage by almost 25%. Ah, wait a second. Artifacts, I see artifacts on the screen. Okay, around 2 volts. It is very clear now on the screen. So, at 2 volts, my card starts to fail. I think I will set my final value for my card to 2.1 volts. Let's play another round of Unreal Tournament at that voltage. And after about 10 minutes, all worked great. Perfect. But we have two more questions to answer. Did we reduce the heat output of the graphics chip? And what is the final resistance of our variable resistor? Let's start with the temperature. I'm using the Infiray P2 Pro thermal camera. In the last video I told you already a lot about it, so I won't bother you that much in this video. But if you're interested to buy one, there are links in the video description. The 3DFX chip is at 60 degrees after about 30 minutes of gameplay. In my previous video, the heatsink reached 70 degrees. Reducing the voltage seems to have lowered the overall temperature by a full 10 degrees. The voltage regulator with the heatsink is unchanged, sitting at around 77 degrees. And the regulator we attached all the wires to is also sitting around 60 degrees, similar to the graphics chip. Let's also quickly check the back of the card. 
62 degrees at the voltage regulator. And the graphics chip is at 60 degrees, similar to the front. Ok, we did get another 10 degrees of the Voodoo 3 2000 PCI. Now we just have to know the final resistance of our variable resistor. With the system powered off, I can measure the final resistance between pin 2 and ground. This was at 128 ohms before. And now it is at 81 ohms. I don't want to bore you with equations. So instead, let's use a website that can help us calculate parallel resistor values. We already know that one resistor is 128 ohms. This is the initial value we got on the card. And we know that the result should be 81 ohms. So we can take a few guesses until we reach the correct values. A parallel resistor of 180 ohms would bring us to a final resistance of 75 ohms. This resistance is too low. 200 ohms gets us to 78 ohms. And 220 ohms gets us to 81 ohms. Exactly what we measured on the modded Voodoo 3 card. In order to verify, I had to desolder one of the wires from the variable resistor to break the circuit. And look at that, we are very close to 220 ohms. This is the resistor my Voodoo 3 card requires to run stable at 2.1 volts. The temperature of the graphics chip under load is then also reduced by 10 degrees. In my next video, I want to flash this Voodoo 3 card with a Voodoo 3 3000 BIOS and perform the same tests. I want to do those tests before I attempt to remove the heatsink, since there is a chance that the card will be damaged. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in the results of a Voodoo 3 3000. Also, like the video if you enjoyed today's content and subscribe to my channel to get notified whenever I upload new videos. And by the way, the mod of today's video should equally apply to Voodoo 3 AGP cards. And thank you guys for using the affiliate links in my last video to purchase the camera. If you missed Prime Day, you can check the link to pergy.com in the video description. There's also a 10% discount code which should still be valid. And with this, we have reached the end of today's episode. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.